Our next paper is um, titled In Utero Exposure to Tsunami and Conflict and Adolescent Health in Sri Lanka. Authors are Deva Kumar D, Satyadas MG, Jayavadana P, Arul Pragasam A, Busat L, Osman C, Fall CHD, Wells JCK, and Vikramasinghe PV. And it will be presented by Vikramasinghe PV. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, let me thank the SLMA for letting, uh, accepting our uh, abstract and giving us the opportunity to present. So as you know, actually, <coughs> uh, natural disasters and any other uh, calamities that would affect the health of the individuals as well as in the long run sometimes. But most of the time, we, what we have experienced is short come. Uh, short-term uh, disasters affecting the short term of the health of the individual. And uh, then once the insult is taken out, and most of the time these will recover back. But there have been few data coming up from time to time, and actually uh, not very much except for two main studies actually coming from the Dutch Fleming study, as well as the East Nigerian Biafra war studies which shows that there could be ever long-lasting effects. So in our country also, we thought we had an opportunity in some way which we should also look and contribute to the scientific literature in that manner, where we had an acute episode of a, con uh, a, a calamity, a natural disaster in 2004 December tsunami. Then of course in the background of that also we were experiencing a long-standing war in the north and east of this country. So having that in mind, we thought, okay, look at the children who were born between January 2005 to uh, August, September 2005, who were actually more or less who were pregnant or who were in the mother's uterus at the time of the, these disasters. So uh, we selected actually uh, several locations. In the north, we took the uh, war only zone, then the war plus tsunami zone, which we took as Mulativ. Then in the eastern province, we took uh, Batiklo interior, which had was experiencing only the war, and then the Batiklo coastline for war and tsunami. Then in southern province, we took Gaul uh, interior, which was not ex did not experience any tsunami at that time, and then as a control, the, uh, sorry, the coastal part of the Gaul, and then interior of Gaul as part of the uh, control. So this was actually having in mind of a preliminary study going on for a uh, much more larger study a little later. So uh, we designed the study in such a way to have 25 from each group more or less. So ultimately it would work out to about 150 uh, sample in this cross-sectional descriptive study. So we took bloods uh, from the index case and actually the others were also included in this study but I am not presenting it here because it is from a larger other aspect, sociodemographic and mental health that aspects will be uh, presented later on in another forum. Uh, so coming into this biological parameters we collected the blood uh, that the fasting, fasting blood sugar, insulin, cholesterol and cortisol levels, then anthropometric waist height and uh, waist, waist circumference, height and weight were collected. Questionnaire was on the basic demographic, uh, social demographic characteristics as well as the skin fold thickness measurements in the two peripheral and two central sites. So we ha I am presenting here about uh, data of 110 uh, adolescents who were actually 12 to 13 years of age at the time of we collected the data and the data will be mainly presented in relation to the control group in using regression models. So the ethical approval was uh, sought from uh, Colombo Ethics Review Committee as well as from University College London because this was a collaboration between UCL Colombo as well as three other universities that is uh, Rooney University, Eastern University as well as the Jaffna University from these three sites. So if I may take you all to the results section, you can see uh, if you, uh, in relation to the control group, the conflict, tsunami, as well as conflict plus tsunami uh, categories, you can see the weight has shown a significant increase compared to the, which I have highlighted, the significant figures I have highlighted uh, in relation to the control. 
Similarly, the standard deviations go for BMI as well as the mid-upper arm circumference. But the other interesting thing is when we look at the fat content, fat distribution, you can see the long-standing effect of the conflict with topped up with another tsunami effect showed a much more higher impact on the fat distribution and assimilation in the body compared to the tsunami alone uh, cohort. Similarly, the diastolic blood pressure, which is also in a way showing the long-standing effect, uh, is also significantly high compared to the uh, control group. So then uh, looking at the biochemical parameters, uh, you can see... You, sorry, I have to intervene. Five minutes are up, but if you can conclude, yeah, then we can yeah, go sorry. for the discussion. Uh, the insulin is actually higher than the other uh, parameters, which denotes, of course, the early changes. So actually, what we have to sh so see here is natural disasters is, as well as other man-made disasters also can have a long-lasting impact on the health of individuals. Thank you. The floor is open for discussion. What of these children? The birth weights were actually, madam, within the normal 2.5 to 3.5. They were not, no, no low birth weights were there actually in this group. Yeah, you have taken all these after a long time, about 10 years. 10 no, years no. after the incident. Yes, 12, 13 years actually. So can, cannot there be other things affecting that these That could children be other in Other the, than what happened in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, but of course when they were showing some uniformity, we could sort of postulate more or less it is into that. So because it has shown the similar pattern, statistically significant across not only single center, not an individual, it is more or less over the, uh, compared to the controls. Manner. How do you explain this phenomenon? Well, it is actually the maternal stress which would relate again to the programming effect of the individual, which could have complete actually. That's why it shows that the long-term effect of the stress related to the maternal hormonal changes as well as the nutritional changes, rather than move on to the isolated tsunami incidents alone. So when the tsunami incidents alone, the changes were very minimum. But of course, when there was a war, it was much more. When the war was hampered again by another, which also would have had a little bit of a more extended effect, not a, a spontaneous thing which will rebound back but it rebounds also will take place because of the background uh, socio-economic situation, the effect has been much more larger. So uh, these children in the conflict-affected areas, they would have been residing in these areas for their period of much of their life? Throughout the period, they have been there. So could because we collected the internal migration, all data. That's why I said there was a lot of question. We had actually another three separate huge questionnaires looking at their disabilities, looking at their mental functions, which we are at the moment analyzing, and actually we have made the second uh, publication also, where manuscript has been prepared. So that's why we have looked at a long place, but we are just in uh, presenting here uh, on this biological and phenomenon. How does this relate to the global literature you said that? Then? That's why it's very, very scared scarce resource, amount of global literature. That's why, I mean, there had been not much of long, long-term things, mainly the uh, Dutch famine on the earlier, in the Second World War. And then, of course, uh, later on, which is the more closest, was the 1960-70, late 60s, early 70s, uh, experience from the East Nigerian Biafra uh, war. Thank you very much, so, Dr. Thank you.